This portion of This Week in Agribusiness is brought to you by Case IH. Be ready with Steiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track Tractors from Case IH. We welcome back to our desk this week Ray Brownfield of Land Pro LLC, a specialist in farm sales and cash rents and farm management. Good to have you back, Ray. Good to be back. Thank you. I have uh, just two or three questions on farmland. Who is putting farmland up for sale? Who is buying it? Well, traditionally, and this doesn't stop, is people age and things happen, farms sell in estates. That's still the primary people I see selling farmland are people who maybe inherited the land and say there's just a lot of beneficiaries here, three or four or five or six, and they say, you know, it's time to sell. So they do. The buyers still primarily are farmers. Believe it or not, in this ag economy, you'd say, wow. But there, there's, there's not a lot of land on the market. It truly isn't. There never really is. And so when farms come up near them, they're the logical buyer, and uh, that's who I've been working with. We keep hearing about funds being more active in commodity trade. Are they more active in farmland purchases? You know, not the same funds that I have a chance to work with that are in commodities. That's a different trade, I think. Now, some are in ag. But the funds in agricultural real estate are larger pensions, uh, different kinds of funds from universities that have lots of money to invest. So to diversify the portfolio, they're going into land as well. Land values are expected to continue to move lower in this commodity price scenario? You would think so. Uh, I think the prime ground is down slightly. You'd think more than it has been, but it's just still in demand. So anywhere from 2 to 3% perhaps in that bracket. They're down already, what, uh, at least 10% from the peak, farmland prices? From the peak, yeah, from the peak. The peak would have been mid-2013, so. But you think about it, from 2008 on up to about that period of time, land went up 10% per year. So it really hasn't gone down that much as you look at it. Cash rental rates, of course, have come down, too, in many instances. They have to come down more yet, most likely, correct? They most likely will have a lot of pressure due to lots of things out there that we see today. A, a beautiful crop out there, who knows what it's going to be, but it looks like it's going to be fantastic. Uh, costs of operation have been down a little bit, but certainly rents are a target that will have to be looked at. That's one of the few things that the producer has some hope of trying to adjust on that side of the ledger. When will that discussion begin? Actually, it's starting now a little bit. It's a little early, but certainly before we get to harvest, more discussion will go. I think this year will be after harvest when we know exactly what we've got in the bin. Then we can get a little better projection on what we think the commodity prices will be, and then maybe look backwards, what did we sell that might help a little bit to adjust what that rent needs to be. It has to go in the context of, of what's happened in the past with that particular farm, right? I mean, it's highly variable from one operation to another. It's hard to generalize, isn't it? It really is. It, every farm's different. Every farm is different quality. The expectations of the owner are somewhat different depending on uh, what their wishes are. How much has been put into the farm as far as tile? Lots of owners put lots of tile in their farms the last five years. That's a pretty good improvement. Well, it mitigates the risk. Maybe the rents don't go down quite as much on that kind of a property. I want to talk with you a little more about that. We'll do so with Ray Brownfield a little bit later on here on This Week in Agribusiness.